In this video, I'll show you how I installed onboard air on my 2020 Forerunner TRD Pro. Today, I'll be starting a project to install my onboard air compressor on my 2020 Forerunner TRD Pro. I'll be installing an ARB CK MA12 onboard air compressor. I decided to go with a smaller of the two ARB compressor models since I'll only be using it to air up my tires. I won't be any I won't be running any pneumatic tools or operating any lockers. And the CK MA12 is cheaper, has a smaller footprint, and it should fit my needs. I already have this mount tray for my Switch Pro that I'm hoping to reconfigure to make room for the compressor. This particular tray is from SD Off-Road. They make trays to accommodate many scenarios. They even make one for an ARB compressor. However, the one I bought is only designed to accommodate my Switch Pro. I'm hoping I can free up enough room by eliminating the terminal blocks and wiring my accessories directly to my Switch Pro harness. I'll probably move the, the neutral block somewhere else. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but that should hopefully free up enough space to mount a compressor. My goals, other than getting the compressor mounted to the tray, is to be able to control the compressor using my Switch Pro. Secondly, I hope to have the Quick Connect accessible through the winch control holes in my Southern Style Off-Road bumper. That way, I won't even have to pop the hood to fill up my tires. I'll just connect my supply line and turn the compressor on using my Switch Pro controller. Here's everything I bought for the job. First off, I have the air compressor itself. So this is the CKMA12. So yeah, this is the air compressor. I also purchased the, um, the pump-up kit from ARB with the extension hose, some fittings, most importantly is this uh, quick connect that I want to use. I want to bring this down again into the front bumper, make it accessible there. Uh, this 13 inch braided stainless steel hose is what I'll be connecting directly to the air compressor. And then from there, I purchased some, some pneumatic hose, uh, a lot more than I'll need with some fittings. And that will be bringing the air down to the front of the bumper. Got some 90s, some female to female connections. And uh, finally, I purchased this uh, Switch Pro ARB um, wiring harness. Now this isn't required. I could have made this myself, but to say, hey, why, why not make it easier on myself? So I just went ahead and, and purchased this. Um, I think this is gonna be everything I need other than Maybe a bracket that I need to pick up at Home Depot or Lowe's that is uh, that I'll be able to mount the Quick Connect on and have it connected to uh, in front of the radiator, making it accessible to me through the access line in my uh, my bumper. So that's it. Okay, well I'm gonna start disassembling. I'm gonna take the Switch Pro Switch Pro harnesses off. Take these power leads off that I put on this terminal block when I installed this originally. Uh, take off this uh, negative bus bar, see where I can relocate that, and see how uh, this ARB mount will fit in here.
everything's off. Let's get it cleaned up a bit and then we'll see how we can mount this compressor. Okay, so I'm thinking this is gonna be my new configuration. I'm gonna put the compressor here. Try to keep it away from anything that will be affected by the heat as much as possible. Of course, the switch pro goes back where it's supposed to in, in these holes here. And then I'm gonna move the bus bar, or the neutral ground bar up here. Okay, slight change of plans. I ended up turning the air compressor 180 degrees, which really is how it should be. Okay, so I have the neutral bar here relocated. Gonna put some blue Loctite on it and tighten it up. Okay, so I have the base of the air compressor on. Just gotta put a little blue Loctite on there and tighten these up. Okay, I got the compressor mounted and we'll see how the tray looks like inside the vehicle. Okay, the air compressor is installed on the, uh, the mount tray. The mount tray is back in place. Got the neutral bus bar back there. So next thing to do is put on the Switch Pro and uh, at least get my existing accessories wired up and then we'll tackle the wiring for the air compressor. The Switch Pro is back installed. The accessories that were installed previously are back installed and everything seems to be working. I have some cleanup to do with the existing wires and then uh, I'll tackle the, uh, the wiring for the ARB. This is the wiring that came with the ARB compressor. We'll start with this one. This, this a bundle of wire is is meant to be in the cab and it's used to connect to your individual switches whether it's just to turn the air compressor on to fill up your tires or whether it's to uh, one uh, run one of your lockers so we're not going to use this at all so i'll just toss that aside and before we talk about the main harness now this is the the switch pro arb harness that i bought from switch pros in hindsight, I sh probably shouldn't have bought this and I'm definitely not gonna use it. It's a kind of overkill for what I'm doing. I'm not running lockers, so I'm only gonna be using one of these wires anyway. And it, I have plenty of wire here. There's no need to introduce another layer of complexity, so I'm not gonna use this. So we'll set that aside. Now, the main harness, it looks a little intimidating and we'll just try to step you through it here. So this is the main connector, the thick red line, the thick ground. This is to run the ARB compressor to fill up your tires. Now these two will sit, if I had lockers, they would be connected to the solenoids on, on the unit. I'm not going to be running lockers, so I'm going to cut these connectors off and tuck the lines away. And then these two uh, connect to the pressure switch that comes out of the, the compressor. So I'll only need to use this connector and then these two to connect to the actual unit. Okay, so let's look at this long lead, which is supposed to come or snake through into your firewall and connect to this, this other bundle of wires. Well, I'm not gonna be doing that, of course, because I'm gonna be running this to my Switch Pro. So this is very long. I'll have an opportunity to, to, to trim a lot of this off. The only wire I need is this, is this red wire right here. And this will get connected 
to my Switch Pro to operate the, uh, the air compressor. Now looking all the way at the other end, we have this, this large you know, positive and, and these two negatives. So this will go to, of course, the positive terminal of the battery. These two all, all bind together and connect to the, the negative terminal of the battery. And everything should work. So before I do any cutting, I'm going to be connecting this up as is just to uh, to see how it works, make sure you know my thought process is straight, and then I'll work on trimming it up and shortening up this, this long harness. Let me show you what I got here. Um, I know it's kind of a spaghetti mess here, but I have you know the main connector connected to the air compressor. I have the pressure relief valve connectors on. Here on my Switch Pro, I just have the red wire connected temporarily to my Switch Pro switch. And then over here on the battery, I have the positive uh, connect, the line connected to the positive terminal, and of course the negatives to the negative. Now I have my Switch Pro controller app on my phone, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and just make sure that the wiring as I know it will work. And there you go. You heard it fire up, you heard it shut off, when it reached pressure. So I know how to wire this with 100% certainty now to my Switch Pro. I will go ahead and uh, trim up the wiring and make sure uh, everything's tucked away nice and neat. Here's a quick shot of the compressor with the wiring harness all trimmed up, tucked away, connected to the Switch Pro and to the battery. I have the braided feeder line on here and I'm kind of rethinking that maybe I want to go a different direction. There's just so much bulk here and the way this thing ends up terminating is right over the battery. Um, I even took off this, this uh, trim here to see if I can get creative and try to run this down inside the fender. But I'm going to try just using the pneumatic holes all the way up to the air compressor and uh, see how that works. So here I've got a 3 8 pneumatic hose quick connect. I'm just connecting to this 90. Next I'm taking the pneumatic hose and running it into that quick connect. I picked this bracket up at Lowe's, trimmed it up a bit and drilled a hole for the quick connect and uh, threw some paint on it and now it looks like this. Okay, next I want to take this pneumatic hose quick connect fitting, run it through this bracket I created and uh, where I drilled out that hose and then I will uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this female to female connection on it and get this tightened up. Next, I'll take the ARB quick connect and I will thread it into this female, tighten it up, and then once I'm ready, I will attach this to the inside of the Southern Style Off-Road front bumper. Here's a view of me looking down into the back of the bumper and you see I have that bracket installed now. I had to take the fittings off in order to get enough room to get those uh, those screws in, but uh, now that I have them in, I'll go ahead and reinstall that fitting. Okay, it's pretty much impossible for me to film this and and do it at the same time. I need actually I need three hands sometimes, but now I have the fitting back on and everything's tightened down. The next step is to get the, uh, the air hose hooked up. Here's a view of the bumper from outside. If I peer down into that access hole, I see that's where that air chuck is. And uh, bringing it up a view above, you can see that's where it is sitting inside the bumper. So the air line is coming in from the engine bay, of course. It's coming from around you know, behind the battery, <clears throat> under the fuse box, 
and then up into the air compressor itself. I guess if you stuck around this long, you found the video useful, or at least entertaining. Consider subscribing to my channel, give me a thumbs up, leave comments below. That interaction incentivizes me to create additional content. So again, thanks for watching. See you next time.